Hi everyone. We'll be waiting two to three minutes before starting the webinar to accommodate for the rest of the attendees who are in the middle of connecting. Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us and uh, thanks for being part of our community. My name is Valen Kolika and uh, I'll be your host for today. A few reminders before we start. If you have issues viewing the stream at any time during the presentation and are using the web browser version of Teams, please refresh your browser. If you're using the desktop app of Teams, please exit and rejoin. Now please note that this webinar is being recorded and will be shared publicly. We will post the recordings on our community at aka.ms security webinars. Closed captions in several languages are available during the live broadcast and you can enable them by clicking on the CC button located at the lower right corner of your screen. Feel free to ask questions at any time by typing them in the live event Q&A window just by clicking on the ask question button. Now be aware that any questions you post will be publicly visible. However, if you prefer, you can post your question anonymously by checking the box right below where you enter it. We often get many questions on these webinars and we will do our best to respond to all of them in real time. In the event, if the answer was not provided or if you may have additional questions post this event, please don't hesitate to raise them on our Azure Network Security Forum at aka dot ms slash azure network security community if you're listening to this after the fact as a recording that's also a great place to ask a question we love to hear your feedback on how we can improve these webinars and you can do so at aka.ms slash security webinar feedback i would also like to invite you to join our public community by visiting at aka.ms slash security community that's the best way to ensure you don't miss any future webinars or major announcements. On our community, you can speak directly to our engineering teams that create our security products. Uh, you'll be able to influence our product designs and get early access to changes by doing things like participating in private previews, request uh, features, give feedback, review our product roadmaps, register for events or join webinars like this. We believe that the best way to improve our products is by removing any barriers between you and the people that create them. So we hope you'll join us. In today's session, Mohit Kumar will guide us through boosting your Azure WAF deployment. Mohit is a senior program manager with our Azure Network Security team. And without further ado, I will turn it over to him. Mohit, the floor is yours. 
Thank you, Alan. Thanks for laying the groundwork. Hello, everyone. Good morning uh, and good evening if you're not in the US. My name is Mohit Kumar, and I'm a senior program manager on the Azure Network Security Customer Experience Engineering team. My team works on Azure DDoS Protection, Azure Firewall, and Web Application Firewall products. These are the core area for fo of focus for my team. And our goal is to improve experience of our customers with these products, uh, drive awareness, um, and also assist our customers in deploying DLCs. Today, uh, we're here to dive a bit deeper into Azure uh, Web Application Firewall. This session builds on previous seminar for VAMF, which was titled Protecting Your Web Apps with Azure Web Application Firewall, where we discussed uh, how Azure VAMF protects your web applications against attacks, the various deployment op options you have with VAMF, the different rule types which are in VAMF, like managed rules, custom rules, bot protection rules, other con important configuration aspects and considerations. Here's our agenda for today. If you weren't able to attend the previous intermediate level session, not to worry, we've got you covered to a certain extent. We will be providing a link to the previous uh, webinar in the, the chat window. Uh, and we'll also start by recapping the key features of Azure WAF. We'll then go over the various uh, types of WAF tools and then take a deep look at the WAF logging, which is generated when traffic is processed by WAF tools. We will dev then dive into even more advanced concepts of WAF cloning and finally close with the VAF integration story. Along the way, we'll also do some live demos on different topics we'll cover in this presentation, as long as the demo gods cooperate with us. Okay, so let's first start by um, reviewing the key features of Azure VAF. Azure VAF, um, if you're not familiar with it, is uh, an enterprise grade protection for your web applications delivered through Azure. Uh, the VAP is compliant with 14 different compliance standards, including but not limited to PCI DSS, HIPAA BAA, SOC, and ISO, and then deployed in the right um, availability zone. VAP is highly available with both application gateway and front door with a 99.99% SLA. It auto scales when additional resources are needed to serve traffic and protects against OWASP and vulnerabilities with its auto box rule set. Azure VAMP is integrated with both Azure Front Door CDN and Application Gateway. When combined with global services like um, Front Door and CDN, which provide application and content acceleration with regional load balancing, Azure VAMP can detect and protect against attacks up, uh, against your web applications at the network edge. When combined with Application Gateway, which provides VNet and resource level application load balancing, Azure WAF detects and protects against attacks uh, against both publicly available and private web applications. Hey Mohit, sorry to interrupt. Can you just try uh, positioning your face differently from your where your mic is? Just there's some uh, voice. Can you just test it is, now? Let's see. Is that better? It just says a little bit more, a few more words. Um, can you guys hear me okay? Okay, I think it's better now. Sorry to interrupt. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Um, both um, Azure Front Door and Application Gateway can publish web applications which are hosted either in Azure or out of Azure. Uh, for example, in on-prem or other cloud services, as long as they have a public IP. Okay. So here are some key manageability and security capabilities of Azure VAF. Starting from the top, the out-of-box um, protection against OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities with pre-configured web application protection rules set from mod security. And to add to this, Azure VAF also provides protection against malicious botnets, uh, which may be used to attack your web applications. For example, in case of brute, brute force attacks um, uh, against your web applications. The botnet IPs are updated with best-in-class Microsoft Threat Intelligence Speed, which is updated hourly. You're also able to create rate-limiting rules uh, based on various conditions in Azure Front Door to protect backend resources from common protocol and resource attacks. Um, and on top of this, you can also create custom rules to create more granular allow, deny, or log rules to protect your application and resources. 
Um, at the same time, all WAF operations and metrics are logged, which can be retained in log analytics and then analyzed with Azure Monitor and can be integrated with Azure Sentinel via the connector. And most importantly, all the administration and configuration can be performed either from the Azure portal um, with PowerShell, um, with Azure CLI, or with ARM templates and Teleform. Now, with an all-up understanding of Azure WAF features, let's now get into the heart of um, WAF protection, which is based on its rule sets. We will um, also look at WAF logging, which can be used to understand how WAF is processing traffic and to detect potentially malicious traffic patterns and identify false positives, which is also helpful in WAF tuning in the next few slides. Okay, so first up, let's look at the WAF uh, rule sets and specifically um, the, um, the OWASP protection rule set, which is the um, protection against web vulnerabilities. Um, at a high level, there are two different types of rules in um, protection rules in WASP. One is the OWASP protection and the other one is bot protection. And here we are talking about OWASP protection first. So as you're already aware, there are two versions of application gateway, V1 and V2, where V2 is the current scheme. Azure WASP on both versions of application gateway uses the core rule sets from mod security. In all, there are three versions of this uh, core rule set are currently supported by Azure WAF on Application Gateway. On Application Gateway v1, version 2.2.9 and 3.0 are supported, while v2 supports um, those two, plus uh, 3.1, which is the most current version of the core rule set supported by WAF. Um, these rule sets are available in Mod Security's GitHub repo, and at any time, um, I will go ahead and bring it up. At any time, uh, when you want to understand what these rule sets comprise of, or uh, exactly what logic, um, what is the logic of a specific rule. You could look through the code of individual rules and rule sets in this repo. Um, uh, so we can click it into any of these rule sets to understand what they have and um, what specific rules within these rule sets are looking for, what patterns they're trying to match. And this is helpful to us when we are trying to fine tune our WAF to work with a number of different applications. And it's also helpful um, to us in determining if certain rules are not applicable, so we can disable them. Um, if, and at the same time, if you feel like more checks need to be added, you can extend uh, the capability of these rules by adding custom rules. Okay, so now let's go over the managed rules that we have um, for front door and CDN WAF. The default rule set 1.0 is the current version and is, ba is based on the same Core rule set 3.1 from Mod Security, which is used in application Gateway WAF. However, the WAF rule set in front door is a tuned version of the core rule set 3.1, uh, which is intended to reduce false positive and is way less noisy than the application Gateway version. Uh, the default rule set is also designed to protect again and your app, web application against uh, common web vulnerabilities outlined by the OWASP top 10 security framework. Uh, it is important to know that even though it is a modified version of the core rule set uh, 3.1, you're still able to map the rule IDs from front door map, um, do we default rule set to core rule set 3.1 from mod security by correlating the rule IDs in WAF uh, with those in the mod, mod security's GitHub people. As you can see on, in this, on this slide, uh, there are three pictures. And so if you take the left uh, picture on the left, um, it shows you the rule ID of the default rule set, uh, which is in the front door WAF. You can take the first three numbers of this rule set and find the rule group for it in the mod security GitHub repo and drill down into the specific rule ID in that rule set um, in the same GitHub repo. We'll cover this in, uh, in a demo in, a, in the next section. Okay, and then the other type of protection rule in WAF outside of the core rule set, which is the OWASP protection rule set is the bot protection rule set, which can detect and protect against traffic originating from malicious botnets targeted toward your application. The bot protection rule set is based on Microsoft Threat Intelligence Suite. Uh, the key difference in bot protection capabilities of application gateway and front door WAP is that um, bot protection on application gateway only detects and acts upon known bot, bad bots. Uh, it does not have the ability to identify other types of bots, while 
um, bot detection on front door can detect good bots, bad bots, and unknown bots uh, for which it can take different actions. Good bots would be uh, something uh, would include validated search engines. Bad bots would be known malicious uh, IPs belonging to known malicious botnets, spoof IP addresses, and unknown bots are bots which are unclassified and need additional validation. Uh, logging for bot protection. Uh, on application gateways available in the application gateway firewall log, while um, the front door BAF, it's available in the front door web application firewall logs. We have uh, a couple of sample queries here that, that can be used to um, view uh, what traffic was uh, processed by these specific rule sets. Okay, and here's a matrix which summarizes the key difference between the BAF types on application gateway and front door CDN. When WAF is created as a function of application gateway deployment and not specifically created from the WAF policy plate, it is called a WAF config. The main thing to know about WAF config is that it is specific to one application gateway and cannot be applied to any other application gateway. While a WAF policy can be applied to multiple application gateways and has more features than WAF config. Most notably, the WAF config lacks bot protection and geolocation. Also, WAF config cannot be applied at a per site or a per URI level on application gateways. So that wraps up the first and second sections of this presentation. Um, and to recap, we did a quick overview of the key, key features of Azure WAF and then looked at the two different types of rules we have in Azure WAF, core rule set and the bot protection rule set. We also went over the different uh, different versions of the core rule set supported by WAF and how to dig deeper into it via uh, by using the mod securities GitHub repo. We also looked at the differences between WAF config and WAF policies. And now let's dive a bit deeper into one of my favorite topics, WAF tuning. So let's first understand why tuning is important. Now, as we know that every application is different in terms of its design, architecture, its components such as web frameworks and languages which are used. Uh, even sometimes it depends on the users who are using the applications and the people who are coding the application. And at the same time, the out of box rule set um, in Azure WAF are designed to be very strict because they're looking for all sorts of patterns um, uh, which could be exploited against web applications and looking to block them. So it is expected that you will see some issues or even request failures with out of box rules. And, and there isn't a single solution or a thumb rule to make all applications work seamlessly uh, with just out of box uh, rules in WAF. And it is entirely normal and expected that you will need to tune your WAF to weed out failures and false positives. The first step in this approach is to run WAF in detection mode only and analyze the logs to understand what requests are being blocked and why. And when you're armed with this information, you can take several approaches towards, uh, towards tuning. For example, if you're using, you were using application gateway, you could start by using per URI or per site policies to limit inspection for specific application URIs or for entire sites. And the key benefit of this approach is that these policies will not impact anything else other than the applications um, which, are, uh, which are defined in there as these policies are not global. You could create custom rules to take desired allow, deny, or log actions for your application and also use exclusion lists to skip inspection based on the available match variables. We'll go over that um, in detail in the next few slides. You could also take the approach of disabling individual rules if they're not applicable to your application. However, we must have done our due diligence in making sure that, that disabling those rules is the right approach, else we end up creating more risk for ourselves. Um, and finally, you could disable request body inspection altogether. And um, if you know for sure that your request, uh, the request for an application will not contain data in the request body. In this case, request headers and cookies will still be inspected unless you're using an exclusion list to um, exclude inspection for headers and cookies as well. Also note that disabling request body inspection will mean that WAF will not be able to inspect data in the body of a request even if it contains unexpected malicious data. So in most cases, your approach to fine tuning WAF should incorporate both technical elements and a careful understanding and considerations of consideration of the security risk uh, that will be created by tuning actions. Uh, 
when we exclude data from inspection or disable inspection altogether, for example, uh, by disabling rules or disabling inspection of the request body, it means that BAF is looking at less and less data in the request headers or request um, uh, client request, and in that increases chances of a real attack going through BAF undetected. While on the other hand, not tuning BAF appropriately for your application can cause um, BAF to take undesirable action for legitimate requests and cause all sorts of uh, failures and outages. Okay, so um, we've talked about why tuning is important. Let's, uh, before we go any deeper into this topic, uh, let's just understand um, how application gateway and front door WAF apply their rule sets to assess and take decisions to block tra malicious traffic. The WAF on application gateway uses something called an anomaly scoring mode. In this case, if the traffic pattern is matched by a specific rule in WAF, it doesn't automatically block the traffic, but rather assigns an anomaly scores to, a score to that request. When the anomaly score for that request reaches five, which is the threshold, the request is blocked. In the table on the bottom left, you can see uh, the different severity levels and their associated anomaly score values. As you can see, a single critical match um, will, will give a score of five and will end up blocking a request, while a single error or a warning match on a request by itself uh, may not be sufficient to block the given request. Anomaly scoring is managed by Azure and cannot be customized. On the other hand, a front door WAF uses what's called a traditional detection mode where we don't use anomaly score, but rather a match or a no match criteria. If the request pattern is matched by a WAF rule, it's blocked, else it's allowed. Because there is no anomaly scoring here, we are not dependent on multiple rules, processing, flagging, uh, a bad request for it to be blocked. Okay. All right, so with that, um, we, we, we took a look at, um, how application gateway and front door WAP are assessing and taking allow or deny decisions on traffic passing through them. Now, I will walk you through a demo. We'll first look at an application gateway log to understand the anomaly scoring, um, and uh, then look at the front door WAF log to see how it matches and blocks, mal uh, blocks malicious requests. So let's uh, switch to the browser here. Okay, so in this browser, I have, um, a couple of windows open. I'm already in the log analytics workspace where uh, my uh, application gateway map is logging traffic. And here's a query that um, I have used to pull up all blocked requests. Um, so that's that will be the place to start. I'm going to look at pull up all the blocked requests and I'm looking at a custom time range here. Um, so let's see what it comes back with and it actually works. We'll give it a second, and while it's doing its thing, we'll go ahead and do the same thing for um, for front door. Or we already have that data. Should just take a second here, or a few minutes here. Okay, while this is pulling up data, let's uh, switch over to and first look at the uh, front door um, log instead of application gateway log, which is taking some time to come up. Uh, I already have the results for um, the all the block requests in a front door web application firewall log. So we can see that these are all the requests which were blocked um, because I'm looking into Azure Diagnostic, which is where resource logs are stored. I'm looking for category, which is front door web application firewall log, which is where all the WAF logs are expected to be uh, in upper front door. And then I'm looking for an uh, for action block. So if I were to expand any of these requests, I can take a look at uh, look at the different uh, attributes of this um, this log. So for example, I can find out what is the request URI, where the block happened, what was the client IP, what was the client port, if that's relevant. And the most important thing here is to understand, you know, what is the message or why is it that uh, 
vast block a specific request. Uh, we can see clearly here it says SQL hex encoding identified. So if we were to go into details of the match, we can expand that and we can see that it's um, it's looking for uh, it's looking for uh, uh, the match variable we have is cookie and this is the value that it's matched. And if we were to look at um, what is the rule? Yeah, so this is the rule which has uh, blocked the request. So this is rule uh, for SQL injection 942450. I'm gonna copy this rule and I'm gonna go to the March security uh, GitHub repo. And I'm going to just use the first three numbers. And so I found that um, SQL injection rule set. If I were to click in this uh, rule set and then do a search again, I find this rule, um, and this is the exact tool which has blocked our request. If I look at uh, the details of this rule set, it says, this rule attempts to gauge whether there is excessive use of meta characters within a single parameter payload. And that's probably the reason why our request is being blocked. You can see the severity level is critical. And so if something, uh, if there's a request which is matched by this rule because the severity is critical, it will get blocked. And that's why this request was blocked here. Okay, so let's go back and see if we were able to pull any data for application gateway. It looks like it's still running. I'm gonna give it another try. I'll give you a refresh browser. Another try here. Okay, awesome. That worked. Okay, so if we were to look at, uh, so what I've done here is basically, again, we went into Azure Diagnostic where uh, all the resource logs are stored. We're looking at category, which is application gateway firewall log, which is where all the WAF logs are. And then we're looking for all the traffic which has been blocked by WAF. So, um, that's our starting point. So we found a bunch of requests which have been blocked by WAF. So if we were to expand this one request, um, we can find um, this. This is this request was blocked because anomaly score because of anomaly score. And uh, if we wanted to look deeper into this request, we can basically just take the transaction ID and say include. Um, and if we run this. The one thing uh, you have to do here in uh, when you're looking up logs for application gateway uh, or looking for a transaction ID in application gateway logs is that you want to remove um, uh, the action filter because uh, there are because it's an anomaly scoring method. Um, you will see that uh, let me that up. You see that there are five different uh, log entries here, but only two of them have a blocked action while others are matched. So this basically shows you how um, different rules in, um, in application gateway WAF will assess or an evaluate a request. And through that process, there will be matches. And once matches happen, uh, anomaly score will be assigned to the request. And when the anomaly score reaches us uh, a defined threshold, that's when a block happens. So if we were to look at um, these requests, we can see the message basically says, the first one says get or head request with body content. So we're not expecting a get request or a head request with body content in it. The second one says request is containing the content but missing the content type header. The third one says request containing content requires content type header and that's why we have a match and that's when uh, that's where the anomaly scores are assigned. So if we were to expand these uh, and try to figure out. Um, yes, so what we're looking for here is what is the rule? So this is a protocol enforcement tool. Uh, and so if we were to go into mod security rule set again, Get out of here and look for rules 920, protocol enforcement. And um, so let's 
So here in this um, in in this rule set, we see many different checks for uh, for specific types of requests coming in. So um, what this uh, request uh, what this rule set basically is saying that um, if there's a get or head request. Um, do not accept get or head request with bodies. So that's one. So that's our first match here. Um, if I were to just press this and go here. So get or head request with content body, while a rule says get or do not accept get or head request with bodies. That's the first match. The second one says um, the request containing content but missing content type header. So let's see which rule is that. It should be the same rule. Um, okay. So if we were to go here and say content type, okay, so content type, um, okay. So the rule will first check to see if the values of content length headers, okay, this is not the one. Okay, let's find it, trying to find it. Okay, block missing content type header with request body. That's the second one. So similarly, um, as, you, as you go through the specific rules or logic in the rule set, you will find all the, all the different uh, rule logic, which is which is matching these uh, uh, this specific request, assigning it a anomaly score, and then finally we get to the two block requests where we see that um, by the time um, the third match happened, our anomaly score was 12, and we know that we only need an anomaly score of five to block the traffic, and this is why the block happened. And then last the last request in this pattern will have um, a lot more details, and you can see um, here under message it says. Uh, total inbound uh, score is 12. Uh, we didn't find anything specific to SQL injection, uh, cross-head scripting, or remote or local file includes, but this is based on the individual paranoia level of the rules, um, where we feel uh, WAF, uh, WAF rules are basically configured to look for a content type header if there's a, a request body with a request and also allowed, um, also configured to disallow any request, any gate or head request, which has a request body. So that's why uh, this is a match and a block happened. I hope this is uh, clear. Okay. Um, all right, so we've done the demo. And so uh, to recap, so far, in the WAF tuning section, we've talked about why WAF tuning is important. What is the right approach to tuning? We've reviewed how the application gateway and front door WAF uh, use anomaly scoring and traditional scoring respectively. And then we did a demo of, uh, on how to look for, uh, look at application gateway and front door WAF logs to understand how WAF is processing the traffic and to correlate the rule IDs in WAF with the mod security's GitHub report to understand uh, to get a better understanding of what the rule logic is. In the next few slides, we'll go over some key methods used to tune your WAF, including usage of exclusion lists, which is on the screen, uh, creating custom rules, and also disabling managed rules. But first up, exclusion list in application gateway WAF. You can use exclusion lists to skip inspection for specific part of a request. Uh, you can do this by selecting the appropriate match variable. There are three match variables um, which are available in application gateway WAF. They are uh, request header name, request cookie name, and request attribute name. It is important to understand that when using exclusion, you can um, disable or skip inspection for headers, cookies, or request attribute names, and not specifically allow or deny values which are being passed in them. It is also important to remember that exclusions are a global setting and that they're applicable to all traffic passing through your WAF. So you have to be extra careful when using exclusion so you don't impact other applications which are published to the same application gateway um, and using the same WAF policy and which could end up making those other applications uh, insecure. Um, so let's just quickly uh, look at you know, how you can go about uh, configuring uh, 
uh, exclusion and application gateway math. So um, here's my uh, VAF policy, which is attached to application gateway. Um, we can go into uh, the, uh, the policy settings blade, and this is where you can configure exclusion. You can select the match variable you want. So you can say request hidden name um, contains uh, user agent to um, what this will do is if there is any request which has a user agent, it will allow that request. Um, if you wanted, if you had a custom header, you could add that uh, here, my custom header, and that would um, that would allow your custom header to go through. Uh, similarly, for uh, cookie name, you can select your custom. Uh, if you have a cookie that you want to allow specifically through map, um, uh, or skip inspection for any request which contains that uh, one cookie or specific cookie or cookie name. You can you can uh, configure that here. My custom cookie name. Um, and similarly, if there are any request attributes like um, which are being passed in the request body, um, you can you can configure that here. Okay. Right. Similarly, you can configure exclusions on front door map and CDN map. One key difference when using exclusions on front door and CDN map is that we have to be a little, we have a little bit more control over exclusions uh, as we can configure exclusions against one specific rule or an entire rule group. And uh, with this, the exclusion will not impact processing of any other rule um, which are not associated with a given exclusion. Let me just quickly show you that as well. So, um, here I have uh, the VAF policy, which is attached to my front door. Uh, you could go into manage rules and then select manage exclusions. When you come in here, uh, you can click add. And as you can see, you can when you create an exclusion, you have the same um, match variables, but you can select what specific rule group you want to uh, apply an exclusion against. So for example, SQL injection, you can also select, uh, you can apply, uh, um, an exclusion against all rules in the SQL injection rule group, or you can uh, select specific rule against which you want you want to apply an, uh, uh, an exclusion, and then you can select the head, uh, header name, cookie name, request attribute name, or if um, there's a request body in a post request uh, that you want to um, uh, create an exclusion on. Okay, so let's get back to our slide. Um, okay. Okay, so now let's see how we can create a custom rule. Uh, there are different conditions you can use to create custom rules to meet your business and security needs. These custom rules uh, can be used to match traffic patterns and then take allow, deny, or log actions against them. Custom rules are only available in application gateway v2, and you can only you can have a maximum of a maximum of hundred custom rules. Um, so let let me bring up. Uh, a demo environment again and show you uh, a few custom rules on application gateway. So here we have a couple of um, custom rules configured. So this is a geolocation rule where we are, uh, we've configured um, a block of traffic or deny, denying all traffic from a geolocation, uh, which is China. And then here we have another custom rule where we are blocking, looking for a uh, user agent um, contains I11, and we were we are blocking that uh, from requests originating from I11 or requests which have a user agent I11 from accessing our application. Okay, getting back to our slide deck. Okay. Um, similarly, you can create custom rules on front door and CDN VAF. Here you have. Um, you can have custom rules, which are of two types. You can have match rules, and you can also have rate limiting rules to protect availability of your application. You can combine match and rate limiting rules to create even more complex processing logic as you need it. So as an example uh, on the screen, um, we have um, a custom rule configured, which is configured uh, to look at all the incoming requests, look at the request URI, and look for um, a string called search, and if the request URI contains string called search, but if the uh, rate limit is more than uh, one per minute, it would block it. 
So that's one example of combining um, condition, match conditions and rate limit to create a more uh, robust rule. And then um, creating custom rules when you're using raft config. If you're using raft config on application gateway B2, uh, you don't have an option to create custom rules from Azure portal, but you can use PowerShell to configure um, desired custom rules and define conditions to suit your need. In this example on the slide, we have a custom rule which is configured to look for traffic originating from an IP address range 192.165.0, and the action is to block this traffic. Um, you can also set rules name and uh, rule name and priority uh, with PowerShell. And then finally. Um, disabling managed rule. If you've come to the conclusion that certain rules are not applicable or relevant to your application, you could safely disable them, but you have to be very careful. Uh, we have to be very careful in our analysis because disabling managed rules equals less protection, equals higher chances of malicious traffic going through WAF to your backend undetected. Uh, managed rules can be disabled via Azure Portal, PowerShell, or even ARM templates. Let me just quickly show you how to go about doing that. So if we were in application gateway, we can uh, go into manage rules. Um, we can expand rules, select which rules we want to disable. For example, I'm going to disable these top two rules, hit disable, and that will and save, and that will disable the rules. As you can see, uh, as I mentioned earlier, disabling rules is, um, is exposes us to more risk sometimes. And that's why, you know, even I don't have the permission to block or disable rules in, in a demo environment. And similarly, you can do that in front door WAF as well. Uh, you can go uh, into the policy, you can go into the manage rules, select the rules and disable. Okay. So let's quickly recap what we've covered so far. We reviewed the key features of Azure WAF. We then reviewed the WAF rules, uh, rule sets, logging, and then cover, covered the WAF tuning, where we demoed how to use logs to understand WAF processing and correlate rule IDs with Mart Security's GitHub repo. We also looked at how to go about creating exclusions, custom rules, and disabling rules if necessary. This brings us to the last section of our presentation today, where we talk about WAF integration. So let's cover this. Okay. So let's look at the uh, integration of application gateway WAF with Azure Kubernetes service, where application gateway ingress controller or AGIC in concert with application gateway helps monitor and configure application load balancing and exposure of those web applications or cloud applications to the internet. Azure WAF integrates seamlessly in this scenario and the WAF on application gateway can inspect incoming traffic for OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities. And if it finds malicious traffic, it will take the necessary action to block it. And then lastly, protection for websites hosted on Azure App Service, where WAF can integrate with both Azure Front Door and application gateway to protect against web app, uh, application vulnerabilities at the edge of Microsoft network or even your network. Um, you can also lock down access to backend app service pools uh, to only Front Door or application gateway with um, a service endpoints. Well, uh, that's all we have for you today, folks. It's been great talking to you uh, on these advanced topics for Azure WAF. And I want to thank you all for your time to join in and listen. Over to you, Valen. Thank you, Mohit. Although the folks or the team, in fact, has been uh, covering on answering all the questions, uh, I still would like to give a chance to the audience to see if they have additional questions uh, through Paul EV. I posted the link and uh, it's a paulev.com slash security webinar. Let me also share my screen so we can take a look at the incoming questions. We'll give it uh, 10, 15 seconds. Takes normally to trickle in for the questions. And here we have the first one. 
AGIC's application gateway ingress controller. We'll share a link to uh, more details about it um, in the chat window. Okay, perfect. Okay, well, looks like most of the questions that came in came through the chat and uh, we'll uh, leave it at that. We'll uh, is, just wanted to remind folks that uh, in case we miss to answer your questions or if you have additional questions after we conclude this call, you can always visit us on our Azure Network Security Forum at aka.ms slash Azure Network Security Community. This has this link has been also uh, well, I think we have another question coming in. Let me see here. There we go. OK, I'll. Uh, I'll go ahead and paste this here. So everybody can see it. Is it possible to apply blocking uh, mode only for specific land IP? Yes. Um, yes, you can use uh, custom rules in uh, Azure VAP to block specific IPs and IP ranges. And then the next one is, uh, can front door be multi-tenant or uh, mutualized between the different apps? Um, I'm not clear on the question. Um, does anybody on the team um, and, and have more clarity on this question than I do? In, in terms of multi-tenancy, uh, Front Door is a, it's a shared service, um, but you do have your own, when you're, when you're using Front Door to front end your applications, it is your specific uh, instances of front door, even though it, it is a uh, shared resource that lives outside of your VNets. Um, and you can you can use things like uh, the the front door X front door ID uh, header uh, that is passed by the front door to identify which front door and, and to verify that it is yours when traffic comes through. Um, I think that's hopefully that that speaks to the question. Great. And then the next one is, uh, does app gateway slash FDWAF uh, protect from zero day web based vulnerabilities or is it depend on core rule set only? Yeah, so uh, today it depends on core rule set only. Um, the, the, there isn't an inbuilt um, or out of box ability to protect against zero day. Um, uh, type of vulnerabilities which would require signature-based blocking, signature-based detection and blocking. Um, this may be possible with other third-party products. So. Perfect. And then the last one, any chance to see graphically the blocked matched requests? Uh, this ability is it doesn't, or this is not a feature of Azure WAF directly, but uh, I believe that this is available in Sentinel. So if you were to integrate or ingest uh, Azure WAF logs in Sentinel, you could uh, look at the requests which are blocked um, geographically in, um, in, the, in a map view. Okay. And I think that brings us to the end. So just again, just to repeat myself, in case we missed or you have additional questions, please visit us on our Azure Network Security Forum at aka.ms slash Azure Network Security Community. Uh, so I would like to close this webinar by thanking Mohit for an awesome presentation. And thank you to the rest of the team who helped answering the questions. And uh, of course, most of all, I want to thank all of you for being part of our community and for joining us on these webinars. We hope to see you next time. Goodbye.